This is 7.3, day two. We're talking about the central limit theorem. Uh, the first part of the notes here says, what's the shape of the sampling distribution of a sample mean when the sample is not taken from a normally distributed population? So we know if the parent population is normal, right? Capital X is going to be our parent population. If it's normal, the sampling distribution is normal. But if the parent population is not normal, the sampling distribution of X bar is not considered normal until there's a certain criteria about the sample size, right? So now we know that that sample size would have to be greater than or equal to 30. That's the key here for the central limit theorem. So if the parent population isn't normal, let's say it's skewed right or skewed left, then we're not going to say the sampling distribution of X bar is normal unless we get a sample size greater than or equal to 30. Does it have a name? Yes, that is the central limit theorem. It's a really important theorem for this course. Uh, pretty much the whole entire second semester is built around this theorem in some way. And the theorem basically says exactly this in other words. It says for large samples, and we consider large to be n greater than or equal to 30, the sampling distribution of x bar will be approximately normal. That's great because then we can use normal calculations and we can solve a lot of problems. Just, we just have to make sure the sample size is greater than or equal to 30. Because using that same logic, uh, if we have small samples, so if we have sample sizes less than 30, the sampling distribution is still going to look like the parent distribution. So when we're talking about sample means, we can use normal calculations because of the central limit theorem, as long as our sample size is at least 30. And this only refers to sample means, by the way. Uh, if you remember, for sample proportions, they have their own set of conditions. Uh, it was large counts, actually. And so the diagram here at the bottom, uh, if we took a bunch of x-bars, right, you can think of a simulation. Every single student in the class takes an x-bar and we graph all of those, it will start to become normal, especially if we have n greater than or equal to 30. It doesn't even matter what the shape of the population distribution was. And so this diagram also depicts what the standard deviation of the sampling distribution is going to be. So this would be all possible x bars, in theory, if we could do that. And remember, we just typically use a simulation to try to simulate as much as we can. And so the mean of this distribution of all these x-bars is an unbiased estimator of the true population mean. So that would be mu right here. And we've already got the standard deviation of this distribution over here. So the standard deviation of all these x-bars would be the true population standard deviation, sigma, over the square root of n, which is our sample size. All right, so we've got an example here. Uh, let's, let's use the central limit theorem with this example. It says, suppose that the number of texts sent during a typical day by a randomly selected high school student follows a right-skewed distribution, uh-oh, with a mean of 15 and a standard deviation of 35. Assuming the students at your school are typical texters, how likely is it that a random sample of 50 students will have sent more than a total of 1,000 texts in the last 24 hours? So we're considering 50 kids, total of 1,000 texts in the last 24 hours. So on average, how many texts per student is that? Well, that would just be, if we did 1,000 divided by 50, that would give us 20 texts for each student. OK, so again, where do we jump in with a problem like this? Notice there's a bunch of room on the page. This is actually one of those state plan do conclude problems. So let's start with the state step. What's going on here? What are we trying to solve? And what variables are we going to use? So x bar is going to be our sample mean. So x bar is going to be the average number of texts per day for a random sample of 50 high schoolers. Apparently the population average is 15. 
Um, we're considering a thousand texts for 50 students. So in our case, we would take a thousand divided by 50. We want to know what's the probability that they sent more than that on average. So a thousand divided by 50, we want to know what's the probability of x bar being greater than 20. So in the state step, we just stated the exact problem we're trying to solve. Uh, and we defined, we said what x bar was, right? It's the average number of texts per day from a random sample of 50 high schoolers. So the state step is good. Let's go to the plan step then. And the plan step is where we got to meet our conditions. And there's two conditions here. There's the normality condition and there's the independence condition. Okay, and this is the only thing that's different and the thing that's new about uh, the normality. Well, I thought it came from a right skewed distribution. Yes, but since the sample size was 50, which is greater than or equal to, greater than or equal to 30, the sampling distribution of x bar will be approximately normally distributed. Right? I know it came from right skewed population, but since the sample size was large enough, we're good on the normality. And why is it that we're able to say that this x bar sampling distribution is normal? That is by the central limit theorem, CLT. Okay, and then the other condition we still have to check is independence. So that would just mean we didn't sample more than 10% of the population. So if you think about uh, your school in this case, <clears throat> we could just consider the population of Lake Park, which we'll say is about 2,600 students. So we should safely be under 10% of that population, right? If we only sampled 50 students, well, 2,600 is a lot bigger than 10 times our sample size. So we definitely sampled less than 10% of the population of Lake Park High School. So the normality part, the central limit theorem, that proves normality, so we could have a normal curve. The independence part, that proves that our standard deviation formula will work. So the standard deviation of this distribution is going to be the population standard deviation, which was 35, divided by the square root of n, which was 50. And I'm just going to leave it like this, especially uh, when I go to plug in my calculator. I don't want to deal with any rounding right now, so I'm just going to leave it as 35 over square root 50. So we've got normality, that's the shape. We've got the spread as the standard deviation, and then the center would be the true population mean, which in this case is 15 texts per day. Who the heck knows if that's still true? If you ask me, kids send way more texts than that per day, but we'll, we'll, keep, we'll assume it's true for now. So state's good, plan's good, now it's time to do some stats calculations. So what's the probability we get a sample mean uh, greater than 20? So we get 50 kids, and the average number of texts is bigger than 20 among those 50 kids. Well, let's go ahead and draw our curve here. We could label it. The mean is 15. The standard deviation was 35 over square root of 50. I told you I wasn't going to get a decimal approximation for that. I was just going to leave it as a, just a fraction. And then let's mark off 20, which is above 15 somewhere, and shade everything above it. What's the probability we get a sample mean of at least 20? Well, we've got all the pieces to do uh, a normal calculation. Let's grab our calculator. Using technology, the command normal CDF, the lower bound is the one that we marked off here. That would be 20. The upper bound, well, we shaded everything above it, so technically that would keep going. We're going to say 1E99, and we're going to give the mean and the standard deviation. Which gives us 0.1562 for our area. So in our conclude step, we need to just summarize what the heck that number means. Well, 
That means there's about a 15.62% chance that a random sample of 50 students from your school, right? I'll put that in quotes because that's just what the problem said. There's a 15.62% chance that a random sample of 50 high schoolers from your school would send a total of more than a thousand texts in a day. Another way to say that um, would have an average of more than 20 texts in a day. This is just how the original question was worded. It was like 50 students send more than a thousand, which means on average that was more than 20 texts per kid in that group of 50. So another way that you could have said it, which would have been totally acceptable, is there's a 15.62% chance that the average among these 50 kids is at least 20. All right, so that's good for this example. I just want to take a moment and go back to the central limit theorem for a second. So, uh, really important point to make for the rest of the uh, for the rest of the course. Really, um, as long as your sample size is at least thirty, we can assume the sampling distribution is approximately normal, which allows us to do all those stat calculations, use the normal calculations or the normal chart, um, even if it comes from a skewed distribution. Right? If the sample size is big enough, the sampling distribution turns out will be normal. If it comes from a normal parent population, well, then we really don't have to worry about the sample size. It's going to be normal. It's going to look like its parents. Okay, so uh, that's all for these notes. Everything about the central limit theorem now you've got. I'll see you in class.